How's it going everyone? Mike the War Host here with my very first painting tutorial showing you how to quickly and easily get a unit of Spica Cohort on the table and ready to go. I consider myself a mediocre painter at best, so don't expect to win any crystal brushes or golden demons with this painting method. I focus on getting solid tabletop quality results in an efficient manner primarily, and adding in more complex styles and techniques has always been a secondary concern for me. The vast majority of paints shown here will be GW paints with the odd Vallejo game color thrown in based on what I had available at the time. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Here's your paint list. First up, we'll be starting with a base coat of Army Painter Leather Brown Primer. It'll give the model an overall warmer appearance than starting from just black or a zenithal highlight of white. It'll also make the various leather straps and bits scattered across the miniatures much easier to spot. Next up is a coat of Xandria Dust over the main cloth portions. Try to avoid the leather if possible, but don't panic if your brush slips, as we would be base coating those separately later on. If you need a bit of reference, uh, feel free to take a look at the card art, or the box art. After that comes Lead Belcher on all of the silver metallics. Don't forget the belt buckles and holster pistols. Our next step will be base coating all the leather with Vallejo Game Color Heavy Sienna. If you made any mistakes with the Xandri Dust, now is a good time to fix them. After that, we'll be picking out the gold details with Retributor Armor. Pay special attention to the rivets in the leather and take your time there. If you make a mistake, go back with the Heavy Sienna to touch it up. Now it's time to get the skin. I used Vallejo Game Color Heavy Skin Tone here. There isn't very much on these models, so it shouldn't take a long time. Just be careful not to get any on any areas that we've already painted. We're beginning the secondary cloth and leather bits here with Rackarth Flesh. Things like the bed rolls, the wraps on the rifles, and the odd uh, tassel here and there. Now that we have all the base coats down, it's time for some shading. Here I've used Seraphim Sepia on the main cloth and leather to tone it down a bit and bring out the details. For the civil parts, I've used a Nulm Oil Gloss to bring out the metallic details and provide a bit of extra shine to all of the metallic parts. Feel free to use regular Nulm Oil if you wish, but I found the gloss version does a great job of making metallics look very shiny and very well cared for, which fits in well with the Spica's overall theme. I've also gone ahead and added a layer of rifling flesh shade gloss to the gold metallics as well. Once the washes have dried, it's time to move on to highlighting. Here I've used the Shabti Bone to provide the first level of highlights on the main cloth areas, keeping it out of the recessed areas as much as possible. A highlight of Auric Armor Gold is applied to the gold areas, and is quickly followed up by a second highlight of Liberator Gold. Stormhall Silver is up next, letting us get both of the silver and gold highlights finished in one step with just one color. Uh, this will also come in handy when we start adding in the slight glow effects later on. Baneblade Brown is up next to provide an edge highlight for all of the leather portions. And to finish up the cloth, a final highlight of Flayed One Flesh is applied on the tops of the cream colored cloth bits. You can also use this to add a bit of a highlight to the flesh areas as well, if you so choose. For any areas that will have a glow applied to them, add a small amount of Gilliman Blue over them. The effect will be subtle on some Spica models and much more prevalent on others. A quick highlight of Pallid Witch Flesh is used on the secondary cloth bits to help pick out some detail, like the straps on the rifle there. And with that, we're coming into the home stretch. Time to clean up the base by applying your favorite black. Here, I'm using Vallejo Game Colors Black, because that's what I had, that's what I had at the time. Uh, I have all my order models based the same way, in sort of like a snowy mountaintop theme. To quickly get this effect, I use Astro Granite Debris. Don't worry about any stray bits of color that get on the, on the black rim. We can touch that up later. But be sure to let this fully dry before you move forward. It can, take, it can take a while, sometimes even overnight, but it is absolutely necessary. Uh, we give the base a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade to 
tough, giving it a rather cool and cold feeling. Then a quick dry brush of Fenrisian Gray is used to pick out the texture details on the base material. And finally, we add some snow to finish it off. I typically do two to three layers of snow secured with uh, some, El some clear Elmer's glue that's been watered down about 50-50, and a good coat or two of gloss varnish to help seal everything down to the base and avoid leaving little bits of snow every time you, your finger brushes across it. Uh, once that's completed, uh, glue down any bits of block you would like, and give the entire thing a quick once over to make sure that there's no little spots that you've overlooked during the painting. And there you have it. A completed Spica model is ready to beat back the hex and serve the all shard. Uh, while I plan on doing more painting tutorials in the future, they most likely won't follow the same format. I had trouble figuring out the best way to record everything in the small blocks of time I had scattered throughout the day that I used for painting. So this was the best compromise I could come up with. I'm not entirely satisfied with it, however, and I'll most likely be trying a couple of different recording techniques before I settle down on one that I like. So that's going to go ahead and do it for me. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one.